Hello, and uh, thanks to all who've joined and to those of you who are watching this after the fact uh, for t tuning in on uh, March 31st, USDA quarterly stocks and seeded acres report that was released at 10 o'clock this morning, Monday morning, the 31st. Um, Ken Plos, and I'll be uh, going through some of the numbers and uh, looking at uh, what they mean going forward. A uh, few things is uh, just to clean up is if you need uh, to ask any questions, you can either text me in the box below as a phone number or just simply preferred method is just typing it in in the chat box and uh, it only comes to me. It doesn't go to everybody else anyway. So um, if that's something you want to do, uh, ask a question. I'll answer them uh, likely at the end. So let's just go forward and uh, hopefully I can keep this under uh, 10, 15 minutes. So overview of the report, uh, quarterly stocks for corn and uh, per, and uh, their plantings were lower than what were expected. Uh, we'll get into the numbers, but um, you know the stocks is definitely down, so it means uh, higher uh, exports and use. And uh, acres were substantially lower. And we'll get into those numbers as well too. Beans, uh, not too much to trade, kind of got what they were expecting for quarterly stocks. For, uh, the plantings were larger than what were expected, but not by much. If you remember watching my video yesterday, I said anywhere from 80 to 82, and it came in at 81.5. So pretty much uh, what the trade had expected. Wheat quarterly stocks were larger. Um, again, this comes from uh, Canada shipping into uh, into the states and uh, their exports are actually stronger for year over year um, but Canada is uh, flooding their northern mills with our wheat right now so um, the plantings for spring wheat were higher than expected um, kind of interesting on that note as uh, nobody really saw that coming uh, because the wheat price has been so depressed so here we go with the quarterly stocks. Like I said, I'll uh, just breeze through these as uh, some people get bored. But uh, what the trade was expecting was right in the average of uh, for beans nine eight nine, and uh, what they got was nine point nine two. So again, uh, pretty close. Like I said, the trade isn't reacting. We'll get into the futures. Uh, getting uh, in the next uh, few minutes here as to how the futures are trading this report and how the traders are trading, I should say. Um, but we see uh, pretty much for uh, last year what we're at. We are lower than last year, so definitely, even though they grew more soybeans this year, um, it was uh, substantially lower um, stocks for soybeans, which basically confirms that their exports have been uh, on a record pace. Getting into the corn, we see corn came in at uh, substantially lower. This might not seem like a big number, but it is a big number. As you saw, the lowest estimates on the board, uh, it's trading just above that. But what we really have to look at is this is their stocks that were reported as of December 1st, and this is the March 1st. So we see that demand for corn really skyrocketing in their first quarter or in their second quarter I should say um, which has uh, definitely been showing the price is the low price of in this time frame the average price was 430 per bushel even though last month it's been a little bit higher it's spent a lot of time down below 430 so um, low prices has definitely encouraged uses of their corn Wheat, again, this number, the trade was looking for a number uh, closer to 10.34, 10.56 is what they got. And uh, again, the main reason, like I said, is Canadian wheat coming in to the States and uh, their exports going out are very strong year over year. Um, but there is a lot of Canadian wheat going into the United States, which basically when you get into uh, their quarterly stocks report, doesn't help their wheat situation very much. Interesting note, this is the last quarter for wheat as the new quarter begins in June. So we'll get that on the June 1st report, or the end of June report, I should say. 
So the cedared acres or perspective plantings, again, this is just projected by the USDA, but uh, interesting note I got from Darren Newsom on DTN is uh, the variance is, uh, is uh, less than half a percent. That should be a zero. For what this report comes out to and what is actually in the December report, what is actually revealed that was seeded. So once we get into it last year, 95.37. What we have to remember is in this report last year, though, it was 97.2 uh, million acres was going to go in the ground. Um, we only, the U.S. only got 95.37 due to the CRP, the Prevented Planting um, Insurance Program. So it got a little bit late. So not to say if uh, we could lose, you know, 1.9 million acres here that easily we could drop uh, even below one um, a million acres off of this number in the coming reports. That one usually isn't uh, known until about uh, August, September reports on their seeded acres. So, so this number could be 91.7, like they said, could be as high as 92.5, or it could be as low as... Uh, like I said, uh, 90.5, depending on the spring weather. So this is what we know right now. This is what the farmers plan to seed. And uh, that's corn in a nutshell. Just going to erase the drawings for corns, getting into beans. Of course, last year we started with uh, 7653, but same thing, 772 was what was reported in the March report for uh, seeded acres, but again, uh, prevented plant is uh, is what dropped this number down. So um, this number here most likely will get in the ground. Uh, beans aren't that easy to seed, especially if we see problems with uh, corn plantings through the spring. We could definitely see this number crest 82, but uh, supply demand, they actually need corn or soybeans over 80 in order to uh, meet the upcoming de demand uh, crunch that will be hitting oil seeds in the world. Wheat plantings, like I said, this was a little bit of a shocker, as uh, most were thinking in uh, in the Dakotas, in uh, Montana, where they could maybe switch to a soybean just because of difference of price, um, that that would be happening. But we see over last year's, and of course, this is really what matters to us. Their winter wheat plantings is, has already been known, so that's what's factored into their all wheat figure. But when we look at uh, the 12 million for spring wheat in the northern states, trade uh, it's lower than what the trade thought, but definitely higher than uh, last year. And uh, hopefully we don't see this happen in Canada as we need most spring wheats to drop um, going forward. And hopefully Canada comes in with about uh, 3 to 5 million acres less than uh, seeded last year because we are really getting into a glut in wheat going forward into the... Uh, into the world market. So some may say, well, this is what we know now, and with uh, soybeans trading at uh, $14.50 and corn just touching up to $5, well, farmers are going to even put in more soybeans. Well, that isn't the case, because when we look at November beans and December corn and compete against each other, um, their spread value right now, basically for the dollars per acre, this should be a four here. But uh, for what the charts look like right now, they are right on the five-year average, which is this line. Um, not necessarily even close to this blue line, which is a high average. So um, the spread number between uh, soybeans and uh, corn right at that 227, usually what I figure is a fair market value is 227. Um, you see that we're running pretty much right in that. Uh, value rate right here. I have seen it go as high as uh, 270, um, but 227 is a most, you know, most people say what is the break even point. So again, those farmers that are planting corn uh, will most likely stick with corn, and uh, those that are planting soybeans are going to stick with soybeans unless the weather really forces them to change. So, conclusion on the report uh, corn. Pretty much uh, neutral on the quarterly stocks, uh, maybe even a little bit towards bearish. Um, 
uh, fall corn could become very bearish if we get into uh, uh, weather. So weather will play even uh, even more of a part going forward through the summer. Um, but again, if we get good weather, um, the places that even though, like I showed you, corn dropped from 95.3 down to uh, 91.7. You do have to keep in mind a lot of these loss in acres uh, were on the fringe areas, so it'd be like uh, you know parts of uh, southern uh, Canada growing canola when they shouldn't be. Um, a lot of these were the fringe area acres, so it most definitely won't interfere with the yield and instead of seeing an average corn yield of uh, 149 uh, bushels per acre whoops bushels per acre um, we'll probably see this come back into the 155 to maybe even 160 because we'll be getting rid of a lot of the poor acres for corn so um, that's interesting note on corn so weather will play a bit of a part but it won't be as widespread of weather it'll be mostly in the corn growing states uh, beans bullish and bullish for the fall as well too. I put in neutral here as well because um, with good growing weather um, we had to have to keep in mind that beans like a little bit drier weather. They're almost like a pea. So um, you know it, it is potentially going to be wet through the uh, through the bean areas uh, this uh, this spring and summer. So we'll have to see what kind of start they get off to. So Wheat, like I said, neutral to bearish. I keep throwing the bearish in because there's just so much wheat in the world. Um, this report didn't have world stocks. The next the WASDE report will have it in April. Um, but the uh, the world wheat situation is uh, very high. So we definitely need to pull back on wheat acres going forward. I know for us it doesn't really uh, help us very much, but... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, our choices going forward. So now getting into the futures and how they're trading. We see there's only about 15 minutes left in trade here right now. See beans, uh, nearby beans up 26. This definitely looks like it could be going to uh, the 15 mark. Again, fall beans pretty much flat, minus 4. They were down at minus 8. Uh, corn. Broke five, if you remember me talking yesterday that this report would be the one, if any, to push it through $5. I don't, I'm not necessarily sold that we're going to stay here as because, like I said, uh, corn at $4.30 created, created demand. And uh, if we want to, if the U.S. wants to kill that demand, then all they have to do is push corn up to six to seven dollars, and uh, there won't be much demand for U.S. corn anymore. So, um, I believe five dollars, four fifty to five dollars, will definitely be the price that we'll be looking at for corn uh, going into the planting season now. But interesting to note, fall corn still hovering around that five dollar range as well too. Um, we did see, although we didn't see any limit up moves, if we look at corn, it's 28 cents trading range for corn from the high to low. And for beans, we see basically 43 cents uh, trading range from high to low. So we didn't see any limit moves either way, but we did see a trading range. What this report coming out at 10 o'clock does is it creates a lot of, all these prices were down lower going forward. And just to touch on canola, Canola is slightly down. Uh, most of this is uh, the end of the end of the month and end of the quarter year for us here, and in, uh, in the first quarter of the year for trade. So, turnaround Tuesday will be the real tell point as to where these markets go going forward. So, I don't see that there's any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can always get a uh, hold of me, and I can try answer them at my best of my ability. And uh, pretty much a boring report, uh, but like I said, there was some uh, huge trading ranges in there. It just uh, nothing's going to close substantially higher or lower. Thanks, and we'll talk to you again.